that. Okay, different types of assignments. So what I had had my students do, they started out with something that was really minimally structured, or well, maximally structured, minimal, minimally in, interactive. They started out with the DJ project. They had to basically introduce a song, and then the second assignment was they had to do a review, so it was much less content from the outside. I didn't care what they reviewed, whether it was a, a record album or a restaurant or a bus. I don't. It didn't matter as long as they were getting the stuff in. But what I basically did was incrementally moved up the amount of speaking time that they had per assignment. Almost all of the assignments were between five and 10 minutes long. And that seemed to be the sweet spot. I started out with 15 minutes, at 15 minutes, and my students started crying, so I had to pull it back. <laughs> but I felt five minutes was too short, because if they're using bed music, then it's just taking away the time. 10 minutes is about the sweet spot for where, where we were doing. Um, by, the end of the, um, by the end of the semester, they had a series of programs. Um, two students had done a uh, tour of Japan uh, based on their own experiences and interviews uh, with other people. Uh, these were a set of four shows that were each 10 minutes long. By the time the students finished with our year-long class, they had approximately 120 minutes of their own audio. So. But different other types of assignments that you can have them do is basic journalism, interviews, people around the community. Um, if they are, I had my students do Day in the Life of, and, and if you were in here earlier, you saw the Day in the Life of the sushi restaurant owner as he's smoking and cutting the sushi at the same time. <laughs> he didn't speak uh, any English, so the students have a choice of either dubbing it or subtitling it. Either way, they're using other skills. If you're in the States, it gets your foreign students out into the community to learn so much more that they couldn't within the classroom. Okay? Then, you have the DJ. A news style program. Storytelling. Works both with more for audio than for video. And then, uh, travel about their own hometowns or countries, things like that. So there's lots of different possibilities that you can do, both for audio and for video. Okay, um, for my class, the first semester, it was really structured. First thing they did was a music video because students love music and music videos. Then they went to an advertisement and this tied into the content, the course content that we were talking about. We did academic listenings about uh, advertising. We did it about filmmaking. And then they did a day in the life up when we were working on our work and job section. The second semester I gave them free reign to choose whatever subject they had to do a four part mini series of it. Okay. Um, finally, different, if you want to go beyond just an audio or video assignment to podcasting different avenues that you can take. So what we did in order for my students to get me their assignments, they used SwitchPod. Uh, you can also use Podomatic, and those have come up, switchpod.com or podomatic.com. These are nice because they are free. Um, at the beginning, when you first put their first episode up, it also pushes down a little advertisement, which you can skip. And so it's just your students' content in there, and they haven't dropped a second ad in any of the feeds. So this works great. It does take a few minutes. It does take a class, basically, to set up for all of the students because they're going through a native level uh, sign-up process. For, and if you've signed up for Yahoo, you know how confusing that can be even for native speakers sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it does take a lot of scaffolding to get them through the sign-up process for the but it does work for video as well. Okay, iTunes. iTunes, you don't store it on iTunes. Uh, they just send it out to the masses from wherever, from your SwitchPod account, your Podomatic, your own website, your school website, something like that. It's an aggregate. Uh, YouTube. I was afraid of YouTube when I first did it. But YouTube's great. I was afraid people would download it and change it. No one does that. What it has done, 
was, I don't have the numbers on here. Yes, I do. YouTube. This is a lie, actually. Uh, this morning when I checked, it was 26,000 views of my, nine, my class's 90 episodes. Uh, I also have my website, and the website feeds directly into iTunes. Uh, the feed, the numbers on that, from November when I started using stats, so from November to now, has been roughly 9,000 uh, viewings. Now that's just from November, so I've been doing it for a couple years now. So roughly at least 50,000 people have seen my episodes 50,000 times. That increases your students' motivation to put out quality work. So basically we're pretty much running out of time, so at this point we do have to say thank you very much for coming and listening to us. We really appreciate it. We will be at the Vidmus uh, desk. Come by, ask us your questions. I'm sorry we put in. I lied again. We got to talk back.